Ben, Hoss! Oh, all right, how are you? Right. I want you boys to come to the wedding. Wedding? Who's wedding? Who's do you think? I'll see you at the wedding. Hey, sir, I want to talk to you. Might have busted a leg, Paul. Hoss, right, get Doc Miller. What are you? You just rest easy now. Doc will be here in a minute. You were pretty lucky. You could have been killed. Lucky? I was supposed to ride out today and pick up my bride. Walter, you sure have been keeping this wedding a secret. When did all this happen? Yeah, and all the excitement I've got to congratulate you, Walter. Uh, would you meet her? What's she look like? I bet she's a pretty thing, ain't she? Well, I've never seen her. You never seen her? No. She's a mail order bride. I answered an advertisement in some magazine. I'm supposed to pick her up. It's four days up and four days back to Willow Creek. You never make it. I gotta make it. I gave that girl my word. I can't go back on a promise. And not only that, I just got through inviting half the people in town to the wedding. I ain't never seen a man's anxious to get his head in the noose of you, Paul. <laughs> I reckon I'll just have to do something about it. What are you getting at, Paul? Paul, could you spare me from the Ponderosa long enough to take a little ride up to Willow Creek and back? Well, uh, I guess if, uh, if there's going to be a wedding, there's got to be a bride. Oh, no, wait a minute. I couldn't ask a man to do anything like that. Uh, Mr. Prescott, that's what friend are for. You just tell me how I can locate her. Be happy to do it. Well, thank you, Horace. Listen, her name's Lottie Hawkins. Send me a map on how to find her place. Now, I imagine she's going to be pretty scared not knowing me and all, so... Just tell her I'm a good man and I'll make her a fine husband and... Tell her I can't wait until she gets here for the wedding. Don't you worry about things. One horse. Bring her back to me. Safe and sound. Tell me where the Hawking branch is. You found it. This is it. You must. You must be Miss Lottie Hawkins. Why, yes. How did you? You must be Mr. Prescott. Well, of course you are. Well, come now, on ma in. Ma'am, ma you gonna take her in with us? Oh no, no. Come on. Come in, in. Oh, Sam. Come on, Sam. Sam? Oh, Sam's a girl. <laughs> well, I, I didn't get much of a chance to freshen up. I didn't expect you so soon. But won't you sit down? Yeah, ma'am, I'm afraid oh, I... Please. I, I've got a little bad news I need to tell you. Oh. I, I was afraid of that. I know what you're trying to say. You don't like the way I look. Oh, no, 
Oh, well, I like the way you look real fine. You do? Well, sure. Well, I certainly am glad to hear that, because I was wondering how, what you look like, too, and I must say, I, I'm real pleased. <laughs> That's what I got to talk to you about, ma'am. You see, I, I ain't Walter Prescott. Oh, you're not? No, ma'am, I'm, I'm oh. Horse Cartwright. Walter had a little accident. Nothing serious, mind you, but, but he hurt his leg, and the doctor thought he ought to get some rest, so I told him I'd ride up here and fetch you. It's sort of getting late, though. I just wonder if your folks would mind if I put up here for the night. Oh, I, I don't have any folks. My mom and pa are dead. They are? Yes. You live way out here all alone? Yes. Oh, except for Sam and Annie. They're my two goats. You must be awfully hungry. I'll get some wood and make some fire. Now here, no, I'll do that. Why? Well, ma'am, that, that's a man's job, not a lady's. It is? Sure. I never did realize that there were so many lonely people in the world. Did you, Mr. Cartwright? No, I don't think I ever thought about it much, ma'am. I got so much family that I never do want for company much. As a matter of fact, most of the time I'm wishing they'd leave me alone. I'd say you were very fortunate. I've always thought that it was kind of... It's raining. Yeah? I gotta get Sam and Annie and bring them in here. You gonna bring them in here, ma'am? Well, yes, if I don't, they'll catch their death. Look, you, you go ahead and finish your coffee. I'll bring Sammy and Ann in. Thank you, Hoss. Yes, ma'am. Fine. Hoss, I'm so ashamed. Putting my advertisement in that magazine. But I was so lonely. And I was going through life getting lonelier and lonelier. Oh, ma'am, they... Ain't nothing to be ashamed about. I can't figure anything being any worse than going through life all lonesome and nobody caring anything about you. Mr. Prescott's letter was the only answer I received. <laughs> I almost fainted when he asked me to marry him. What's he like? Mm. He's a fine gentleman. Fine, fine gentlemen. If you ask me, both of you got a pretty good bargain. I sure hope so. Hoss, have you ever heard of the, the Knights of the Round Table? The, the what? King Arthur and... And all of those knights and their ladies? Oh, they lived in England about, oh, a thousand years ago. And that's what they call themselves, the Knights of the Round Table. Well, the knights were so brave and, and so noble and so, so chivalrous. I used to love to have my ma read to me about them from her books. My ma was a school teacher. Did you know that? Miss Lottie, whatever happened to your ma? Well, they say she died of the fever, but that's not true. She died of overwork. She did all the plowing and everything. 
Pa used to say that it was a woman's job to keep busy while a man went out looking for something to eat. It was usually liquor he went looking for. Well, Ma'am, from now on out, things are going to be a, a lot easier and a lot nicer for you. I used to have all these silly dreams of being swept off my feet by some beautiful young romantic man that come riding out of the West. But now I'm going to marry a man that I only got some letters from. A man that I've never even seen or met. Dad, come it. We have a poem about this. Would you like to hear it? My house is constructed of natural soil. The walls are erected according to Hoyle. The roof has no pitch, but it's level and plain. And I never get wet until it happens to rain. <laughs> Good night, Horace. Good night, Miss Lottie. Oh, young Lockenbar, he came out of the west. Through all the wide border, his steed was the best. And save his good broadsword, he weapon had none. He rode all unarmed, and he rode alone. But ere he alighted by Netherby Gate, the bride had consented, the gallant came late. For a laggard in love and a wastrel in war was to wed the fair Ellen instead of brave Lockenbar. That's right, pretty ma'am. Sure like to hear you read it, too. Thank you. Horace? Mm hmm Is Mr. Prescott anything like you? I reckon he is. He ain't. I'll tell you this. He's a fine gentleman. He will treat you with all the respect and honor that, that you deserve. Well, does he look anything like you? Mr. Prescott? <laughs> no. Thank you, lucky stars, for that, too. No, compared to me, Mr. Prescott's a real fine, handsome gentleman. I reckon most fellers are compared to me, though. I wouldn't say that. I think you're one of the nicest looking men I've ever seen. Howdy. Howdy. I ran out of food a ways back, and your coffee smells mighty good. Watch my spare cup. You got your boots. Come right on. Not a man. Plenty of coffee there. You just help yourself. Might even have a bean or two. You hungry? Too much for you? Leave me alone, you big brute. I've got rid of them. That was wonderful, Haas. What? Protecting me when it could have cost your life. <gasps> them two skunks. Cowards are all alike. Anybody could have done it. Oh, not just anybody, Haas. Not the way you did it. You better get some sleep. I want you nice and fresh and pretty tomorrow when we get to Mr. Prescott's ranch. Wait till you see that ranch house. Good night, Horace. Good night, ma'am. I'll make you a pallet out of some nice, soft pine needles and leaves, and 
I think I'll spend the rest of the night over there by that campfire in case those two skunks decide to come back. Ben, boys, uh, what are you doing here so early? Charlie, take the horses. You know, the wedding ain't until tonight. Oh, we just thought we'd come along and see if we can give an old bachelor like you a hand, Walter. But I see a couple of other people have the same idea. Yeah, and I uh, sure appreciate it. Besides, we wanted to see what the bride looks like. So do I, Adam. So do I. Well, we came to do some work. Let's go. It's a very good idea. I think I'll check the punch, make sure it's all right. <clears throat> Help yourself. <laughs> you know something, Ben? What? I'm as nervous as a cop in a bullpen. <laughs> well, here I am. I'm not getting any younger. I feel like a youngster about to take a girl out for the first time. Walter, you know something? I'll bet you that bride-to-be of yours is more nervous than you are right now. <laughs> Here. Put that around your neck and it'll keep you cool. Horace, you are so downright chivalrous, you're gonna spoil me for good. Here, this is finished. Oh, good. Good as new. Thank you, ma'am. Well, I guess you're going to want to be going. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Miss Lottie. Ain't you going to dress? Well, I am dressed. Well, I mean knowing the new stuff that we bought back down the way. Oh, I'm going to save those for the wedding. Uh, Miss Lottie. Ma'am, don't you want to look nice and fresh and pretty for meeting Mr. Prescott the first time? Hoss? Hoss? Wow. What do you think, Hoss? Do you think the folks at Mr. Prescott's will be pleased? They sure will, Miss Lottie. They sure will. Are you pleased with me, Hoss? Ma'am, I think you're just plain, plumb, downright beautiful. And I think Mr. Prescott's a mighty lucky man. Come on. Hey, folks, why don't you rest yourself a spell? Some fresh sandwiches here and cold beer. Why don't you rest yourself a spell now? Come on, sit down now. You're the bride to be. How about a beer for a bridegroom to be? Hey, here they come. Yeah. Ben, I'm nervous as a leaf in a windstorm. Oh. Hi, Horace. Hey, what have you got here? Hi. Hi. Hi, Joe. Fine, Adam. Mr. Prescott, here's your bride. A water, aren't you? Do you want to say howdy? Yeah. All safe and sound, just like I promised. Howdy, this here is Mr. Prescott. Welcome to your new home, Lottie. Thank you. Mr. Prescott, if I... If I'd known your new bride was this beautiful, I would have gotten her myself. I believe I would have, too. Oh, Lottie, this is Mr. Cartwright, Hoss's father. And uh, his other two sons, little Joe. Ma'am? And Adam. Lottie. And all these people are our wedding guests. Oh, uh, no, you must be tired, so I'll have Francesca show you her room. Francesca? Francesca! Si, senor. Oh, uh, show my bride to her room and see that she gets anything she needs. The wedding's going to be tonight, so it'll give you a chance to rest up for a spell. Come on with me, senorita. Please, come. Senorita. Congratulations, Mr. Prescott. You're a lucky man. Thank you, little Joe. Ben, what do you think of it? Well, the important thing, Walter, is what do you think of it? I think she's wonderful. Yeah? Of course, i got to thank you. I'm going to be indebted to you for the rest of my life. Forget it, Mr. Prescott. Like I told you, that's the least a friend can do. Well, if you gentlemen will excuse me, I'm going to go in and do a little talking in the future, Mr. Prescott, and may get to know him right beforehand. You said the 
pretty, but uh, a little younger than I thought she'd be. Hmm. Well, give me some meat. What did you two talk about on the trail? Something uplifting, I hope. <laughs> lots of things. Yeah, lots of things. Like what? Hmm. Like King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. Lots of things. King Arthur? Oh, come on, you're joshing me. King Arthur. Hmm. Hey, Adam, we've been making a big mistake. We better call him Sir Hoss. <laughs> Sir Hoss, thou good and noble knight, I didst not know thou possessed charms to melt the heart of yon fair damsel who did dwell in the wilderness. <laughs> Sir Hoss, O oh, knightest of the chuck wagonist. <laughs> hey, here comes Walter. I propose a toast to the new and happy groom. Yeah. Mr. Prescott, here's your wedding. I ought to kill you, Hoss. I ought to kill you right where you stand. Mr. Prescott, what did I do? You know darn well what you did. Now get off my property. Well, now, wait a minute. What happened? Maybe you ought to ask your son what happened. He knows. He knows what went on between them on the trail. I don't know what you're talking about. My good friend, I trusted you like I would my own son. You played me for a fool. That ain't true, Mr. Prescott. Why won't she marry me, then? I don't know, but you got to believe me. Get out of here. The lot of you. Get out of here. Mr. Prescott. Let me go up and talk to her. Just let me go up and you talk to her. You stay away from her, Hoss. Just help me, God, if I ever catch you going near her again, I'll shoot you on sight. <laughs> Lord, I don't know what he's talking about. I swear I don't. Let's get home. There's nothing but trouble here. Yeah. Yeah. lived on that farm all alone for all these years. I go up there and I get her. Bring her down here and drop her down right smack dab in the middle of a bunch of strangers to get married to a man she ain't never seen before in her life. Scare anybody, much less a little gal like her. Well, that makes sense. Doesn't change the fact that Prescott wants to kill you. Uh, he's jumping at conclusions. Ain't nothing wrong with that little gal except, except she's scared, that's all. Maybe she's in love with you. In love with me? It's the biggest bunch of nonsense I, I ever heard. Well, I don't think it's nonsense. Why would she ask you to take her with you? You know, Adam could be right. She might be in love with you. Change your mind, Lottie? No. I'm sorry. Henry, you take a bag, see that she gets a nice room, and send the bill to me. I'll pay you back as soon as I get myself a job, Mr. Prescott. I've known Hoss 
Scott ride for more years than you can come. I always figured him as a man could be trusted. I never thought he'd do a thing like this to me. Walter, it's just hard for me to believe that Hoss would two-time a man that way. What are you calling me, Thompson, a liar? I say Hoss Cartwright deliberately cut me with that girl. I say he's a skunk who can't be trusted. All right, Walter, have it your way, but I know the Cartwrights, and they ain't built that way. Hi, Charlie. Hoss Cartwright just rode up to the hotel. Walter? Walter? No. Hoss. Hi, Miss Lottie. I knew you'd come to see me just as soon as you could. I just knew it. Yes, Miss Lottie, there's, there's something kind of serious I got to talk to you about. Well, what is it, Oz? Well, ma'am, some of the folks around town are saying stuff that, well, like, the reason you didn't marry Mr. Prescott was, was because you was in love or something with me. I... Then you know it, don't you, Oz? You know it. All that time on the trail, you knew how I felt about you, and I was waiting for you to tell me how much you love me, but... Of course you couldn't, because you had to know for sure how much I loved you. Oh, I dearly love you, Hoss. I'm just so happy I could cry. Miss Lottie, I... Ma'am, ain't there some place we can go where it's uh, kind of private where I can talk to you? Oh, well, of course, Hoss. Of course. more than you need that gun. Well, Walter, I guess I was wrong about Hoss Cartwright. Nice of you to admit it. So help me, I would have shot him. Prescott, my advice to you is to forget it. Forget it? That's one thing I won't ever do. That's all you can do. Man steals a horse. You put a bounty on his head. Why shouldn't it be the same for a man who steals your wife? Well, Walter, you don't mean that. Putting a bounty on Horse Cartwright? Why shouldn't I? Horse Cartwright stole my wife, didn't he? We've all paid up to a thousand dollars for a horse thief. I'd say a wife stealer is just about three times as bad. I'd suggest you go on home and forget it, Walter. Wild talk like that's no good. Some darn fool might take you up on it. Maybe if he did, he might not be such a darn fool as you think. Let's go find us some horses and guns. Ma'am, what I was trying to tell you back downstairs there was... Yes? Well, ma'am, I... Well, about... About me... being in love with you. Oh, Hoss, you don't have to say it. I believe you. And it's just about the nicest thing that's ever happened to me in my whole life. Being loved by a man like you. <laughs> Doggone it, Miss Lottie. You, you don't hardly even know me. I mean... Not really, you don't. 
I mean, vicious. I'd be so dead burn on me. I, I'd make any woman miserable. You would? Yeah. I, I got a real bad streak in me. You have? Yeah. Well, compared to me, why, Mr. Prescott's a real fine gentleman. At least why he was till he thought I crossed him up. You'd be doing yourself a big favor by forgetting me and marrying him. Us. I know what you're trying to do. You do? Yes, and I admire you for it. Well, I, I just wanted to be fair to you and Mr. Prescott, that's all. You are, without a doubt, the most honorable man I ever met. Willing to sacrifice our love so as not to be accused of betraying a friend's trust. Huh? You know, I think that's why I fell in love with you. You know, you're just like one of the knights of the round table that I used to dream about. I mean, you're kind and courteous and gentle and, and brave. I used to think that to meet a man like you was just a silly dream of a, of a lonely, young, romantic girl. But now it's come true. Miss Lottie, you, you got to forget about me. You, you got you to gotta quit thinking things like that. Well, you're just trying to sacrifice yourself and our happiness because of Mr. Prescott. Well, I won't let you do it. Well, yeah, I ain't trying to sacrifice nothing. What I'm trying to do is... Well, I... Hoss, I understand your feelings and, and I respect them. But a very wise poet once said that I could not love thee dear so much, loved I not honor more. But Miss Lottie... No, I won't permit it. Now, I know it'll take some time for Mr. Prescott to get over his anger, but he will. We must be patient and wait. And meanwhile, we can... we can still see each other. Secretly, if, if we have to. Oh, I, if I ever needed any proof of your love, you just gave it to me. Shot aimed at you? I dang fine old Roy. Now, why in the world anybody want to kill you? I don't know. Why don't you ask Prescott? Wait a minute. Are you saying that Walter Prescott took a shot at Hoss here? Well, not exactly. But just a little while ago, over in the saloon, he said it'd be worth three thousand dollars to him to see that Hoss was taken care of. You mean, you mean Walter Prescott offered a bounty? Hired a man to kill me? I don't believe it. Sounded like it to me. He couldn't have been serious. Well, maybe he wasn't. It looks like someone's taking him for serious. What happened? Somebody just took a shot at Mr. Cartwright. Boss, he said that someone took a shot Miss at you. Lottie, Are you Miss all Lottie, right? Everything's all right. What? You're going back up. Everything will be all right, I promise. I'll see you, Roy. All right. Dick, I'll see you later, huh? Thanks. I want you to do something for me. I want you to get out of this town and get out fast. Go home. Because that bushwhacker is just itching to get another chance at you. Boy, if there's a man looking... Now, do as I ask, will you? Look, here's your horse. Now, make my job easier for me, will you? Not tougher. All right. But I still can't believe that Walter put a bounty on me. I just can't believe that. I can do. 
No, there's nothing that you can do. Sheriff, this is all my fault, isn't it? Someone took a shot at the horse because of me. I didn't say that. But since you're asking, Walter Prescott and the Cartwrights were pretty good friends before you come to town. Now you've got two families at each other's throats, and horse Cartwright's got a pretty good chance of getting murdered. Have you talked to her? Why didn't you tell her what you were supposed to? Doggone it, Paul. I, I just couldn't. I couldn't hurt that little gal, Paul. Poor little old thing's got a head chock full of dreams. She's got me pegged for one of them nights of the round table. I don't want any cracks. Hey, did I say anything? Adam, did I say anything at all? Boss, I can understand you not wanting to hurt the little girl's feelings, but uh, sooner or later you're going to have to tell her the truth. There's no telling what Walter will do. He's already done it. Hmm. What's he done? Nothing. I can't talk to that little gal, but Dad Barnett, I can talk to Walter Prescott. I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna straighten this out with him once and for all. talk to you. We don't have anything to talk about. I came to ask if your offer of marriage still holds good. Why? Why do you want to know? I'm ready to marry you. If you still want me. What did you say? I've been thinking things over. And I'm ready to go through with our bargain. I see. Sit down. So I'll be able to sit down, too. It's mighty wearing leaning on this too long. What made you change your mind, Lottie? I found out I was wrong about Hoss. What happened between you and him on the trail? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Not nothing. You expect me to believe that? How do you act toward you? He was very polite. And very gentlemanly, but that's all that it was. Are you trying to tell me you're not in love with him anymore? What happened, Lottie? Didn't he ask to marry you? Well, of course he did. But I was the one who changed my mind. What difference does it make, Mr. Prescott? I'm here. Isn't that enough? It sure is. You did the right thing, Lottie. You know, I'm going to make you the happiest girl in the world. And I'll give you anything, anything you want. All you have to do is ask me. Thank you, Mr. Prescott. Lottie, will you be happy with me? Of course I will. Why else would I be talking like this? You're not a very good liar, are you? Liar? Yes. You knew about the bounty I put on his head. There was some careless talk about You're it. still in love with him, aren't you? Why, well, Mr. Prescott, I told you. I came here to marry you. A woman doesn't.
doesn't come to ask a man to marry him with tears in his eyes. Not if she's happy about it. I thought you wanted me killed. I did. Until Lottie came here a little while ago and offered to marry me. You did? And you know why? To save your life. You're a lucky young man. I guess it's true, isn't it? There's no fool like an old fool. Take good care of us, son. Oh, he will, Mr. Prescott. I know he will. Oh, everything's gonna be all right now. Isn't it wonderful, Hoss? Yeah, I reckon it is. There for a while, I, I thought the whole world was against us, but... But now, all of a sudden, everything's working out, just like in the storybooks. Oh, Hoss, I'm so happy. We can be married now. Miss Lottie, come over here and sit down. Yes, Hoss. Ma'am. Since the first time I met you, I've thought that you were a wonderful person. Well, yes, Haas, I know that. I guess that's why it was so easy for me to fall in love with you. Ma'am, when, when two people like you and me like each other a great deal, they don't want to hurt each other, do they? I mean, they don't want to rush into anything. They, what I mean is... Two people who like each other? We love each other. We do love each other, don't we, Hoss? Ma'am... Like I said... Of all the girls I've met... You're the... Nicest sweetest but 
Ma'am, I, I don't know how I feel. Maybe if I had a little more time, if maybe I could learn. No, to... please don't say any more, Oz. I thought I was so smart. I thought all those sweet and wonderful things you said and did while we were on the trail. I thought you meant those for yourself. But you meant it for Mr. Prescott, didn't you? I didn't want to hurt you, Lottie. I know. You're too kind and gentle to hurt anybody. What are you going to do now? I don't know. I... I think I'll go someplace and... And try to find myself a job someplace. You reckon you'll be all right? Yes, sir, so I'll be all right. Because, you see, I'm not going to believe in those silly dreams anymore. About knights in shining armor. I know they don't really exist. Except for maybe one. Bye, Huss.